Hello, how are you doing? I just got back from a week's holiday of living out my under the Tuscan sun fantasy by driving around the Italian countryside, which was absolutely beautiful, even though it sort of rained half the time while I was there, but it was still gorgeous and did lots of Italian things like holding up the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and um, which sort of when I look at the photo, it kind of looks like a photoshopped photo, but I was actually there. And also in Pisa, there's a really cool Keith Haring mural that he created there in Pisa in 1989. And uh, so, yeah, that, that was very fun to see. But yeah, I had a wonderful time. I even bought some Italian salt from a little old uh, Italian nun, um, which was so cute. And, uh, and, and uh, th apparently the salt is flavored with red wine. I I'm not really sure how they did that, but, uh, but you know, Know, I'm nuns have a lot of time to experiment I guess um, but anyway I got back uh, to London and as happens when I go away and come back um, there's a pile of books waiting on the other side of my door uh, through my door slot um, that, that publishers have kindly sent me. So um, I have this big package of books um, to go through and I thought it would be fun to open it live um, to so we can discover what uh, is inside together because I have no idea what is in these packages. Uh, publishers just send me things and I mean sometimes they'll tell me that they're sending them and I don't know when they're going to arrive but other times it's like a big huge surprise. And also there's a special pink package I'm not sure what's uh, inside here, but um, I hope there's something very special. So yeah, let's go through these and I'll open up the packages and we can discover what books are there together. First up is just a little package, but you know, they say good things, small things, small things come, out, come in small packages. No, good things come in small packages, don't they? <laughs> but, uh, so what is this? Uh, the Cellist by Jennifer Atkins. Okay, I've not heard of this before. Uh, it's put out by Peninsula Press, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a proof. It's a book that's going to be coming out in June 23rd. It's a debut novel by a bold new literary talent. So it sounds like a love story. It's about a woman named Luke and a man who's a sculptor named Billy, um, who she's had a complicated relationship with over time, and it's it's meant to be a meditation on love and music and the silence and inscrutability which underpins the performance of each, uh, which sounds really good. Second small package, and this is from Thumb de Estampa, um, which is a really interesting uh, press that puts out a lot of uh, Spanish literature. And this is called Goodbye Ramona uh, by Montserrat Roy, oh yeah, who's an author. They've published um, some other of her books um, in the, the past and uh, Colm uh, Toybin uh, is a big fan of hers. Um, he says this is a shining light of Catalan literature. Ah, so this sounds really good. So this uh, follows three generations of women over a 50 year time period uh, and following the different challenges they face in their specific time periods. Um, they're, they're all called Ramona, um, which sounds slightly like a confusing uh, Hanya Yanagahara uh, thing. So I'm hoping the, that'll be uh, sort of easy to, to keep track of. But uh, but yeah, so, so looking at Spanish history through um, the, the eyes of different generations of women, which sounds totally like my thing. And this is out really soon. It's uh, out in the 15th of May. I get to the packages that I have to tear open a bit more. There we go. And uh, okay, this is a novel called Antonio. Uh, is it a novel? Let me see. Ah, I remember reading about this. So this is by a Brazilian novelist uh, called Beatriz uh, Bratcher. And uh, so it's about a man uh, who's on the cusp of fatherhood and he discovers a big family secret. And then he goes to try to investigate this, but he hears some conflicting testimonies um, from people that knew his family. And he has to try to piece together what is the actual truth. And I, I love the cover of this, this kind of like branch going down to suggest a very complicated family tree. And this is also published quite soon on May 26th. And uh, this is the author photo, uh, which I really like. Next up, <laughs> I'm mostly very weak after my time away. I need to go back to the gym now. 
so this is a novel called The Liberation's Child by Lucy Crookshanks. We've got a dystopian novel. Uh, so this takes place in Britain in the near future uh, when the country has been ravaged by genocide and it's about uh, two different individuals that go on the quest to find a baby that has um, been lost in this illegal adoption ring. And this was actually published last month in, in April. Ooh, here's a big one from Faber. And... <laughs> I don't know why I find it so difficult to get into these packages. Okay, so this is the final copy of You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Akweke Ameze. Um, so you can see this gorgeous cover here. Now, I have conflicted feelings about Ameze's writing because I, I read their first novel and uh, Freshwater, which, yeah, I just I had really conflicting feelings about and made me not sure I want to read this author anymore. And after all of there was like really big drama uh, between Ameze and uh, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, um, which just yeah made me slightly skeptical about reading their writing anymore but uh, but I, I've heard I know so many people love their books and I've heard really great things about their other books so I know I should give them a try especially because this sounds like a, a love story about a woman that's on the cusp of uh, just having this amazing holiday and meets a man that she uh, wants to be with uh, but he is the one person she absolutely can't have so that sounds like a good conflict let's talk about something from Picador Books or Pan Macmillan, um, which is going to be even more difficult to get into. Really should have brought scissors for this. Okay, I'm going to have to use brute strength and just rip into this cardboard. Oh my god. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and here we go. Ooh, it's a really beautiful looking book. Uh, so it's Every Good Boy Does Fine, A Love Story in Music Lessons by Jeremy Dent. There's some shiny gold on the cover. Hey, so this is a memoir about a man who is a child prodigy pianist and the difficulty he had in finding teachers that could adequately nurture his talent uh, in, in order to become uh, the, the musical star that he eventually became. And uh, so I, I always find it really fascinating listening to stories about child prodigies uh, who yeah just really don't fit in with society uh, but have this amazing ability and it's almost like the wider world doesn't know what to do with it and uh, so it's always fascinating learning about uh, how they find their their place and achieve their their stardom and it would be really interesting to read this alongside uh, this novel the cellist so there's a lot in this uh, this this book call about uh, classical music uh, unexpectedly <laughs> okay I can't wait anymore I'm gonna open the special pink package I'm always like a I, I'm I'm very impatient when it comes to like presents um, which I, I think of these like these packages as they're kind of like presents that have been sent to me unexpectedly and I've no idea what is inside them and so you know I'm like a boy on Christmas and ooh, this comes with a special uh, tote bag and oh th yeah this is a non-fiction book um, which is called Bad Gays a homosexual history by Hugh Lemmy and Ben Miller ah uh, yeah that's right um, so this is uh, by the guys that uh, put out this podcast uh, called Bad Gays, um, which I've always meant to listen to. I keep meaning to to listen to it. And this is described as an unconventional history of homosexuality. Um, so it gives a number of examples like uh, Oscar Wilde and how uh, Bozy is seen as this you know, great villain um, because of the way he treated Oscar Wilde. Um, so it tries to give his perspective as well as a number of different figures from history um, who were homosexuals but who were kind of vilified as, as bad gays and uh, I think that's such a fascinating perspective to, to look at because you know so much about homosexual history in trying 
trying to uh, grant and try to and trying to open up um, rights for uh, gay people. Uh, there, I feel like there's been almost like this whitewashing of of history to you know sort of say like oh we're not bad people, uh, but you know there there have been these villains from the past who in a way are kind of fabulous in themselves. And this is something that uh, the author Carmen Maria Machado wrote about in her memoir. I remember because you know these kind of these figures um, that are sort of fabulous in their their horribleness. So of course I think it's important to acknowledge that the things uh, that a lot of these people that are discussed in this book um, did were were bad and and really horrible and in a lot of ways they were terrible people but, uh, but at the same time they are part of history and so shouldn't be written out of history or you know they shouldn't be forgotten because if they were so bad it was probably for a reason so yeah this sounds like a really fascinating uh, non-fiction book and how fabulous will I be uh, walking around London with my tote bag that says bad gays <laughs> next up is another big but uh, quite thin package so uh, I'm guessing there's no tote bag in this and this is from Granta, and it's a book called The Seaplane on Final Approach, uh, which has this very cool cover, and is by Rebecca Akesi. <laughs> okay, so appropriately enough, this is um, about tourism, um, having just gone on holiday myself, and it's about a group of tourists that go to uh, Alaska for to try to have this authentic Alaskan experience um, with these particular guides, but then uh, the experience doesn't turn out as as they expected it to be, and these guides um, have uh, very <laughs> uh, some sinister-sounding motives. Um, so it sounds like a like tense and interesting book. And finally, there's this rather big package. So if small things come in small packages, then big things must come in big packages. <laughs> very silly. Uh, okay. Oh, so it's actually two books. That's why it's so big. And the first book is called The House of Fortune. Oh, by Jesse Burton. It's Jesse Burton's new novel. Second up is uh, The Dance Tree. Oh, by Karen Millwood Hargrave. So I have to admit, I've not read Jesse Burton's uh, novel, The Miniaturist, because uh, I heard quite mixed things about it, but I did read her novel, The Muse, which I really, really enjoyed. And uh, she's such a fascinating historical novelist. And uh, so this is set in Amsterdam in 1705, and it's about a girl's coming of age story and how she's turned 18, her family has fallen on really hard times financially and she needs to meet a man um, to uh, to sort of secure her future and uh, she goes to a ball to meet a man um, but then remembers something about her past um, which is quite dark so yeah that sounds like really intriguing and fun and the dance tree is another historical novel which is set in Strasbourg in 1518 uh, when a dancing plague afflicts a number of women that that go into the square and just keep dancing and dancing without end and uh, the the locals think that the devil has possessed them and it follows the life of a woman that is pregnant and living with her husband and mother-in-law and her sister has been sent away uh, for many years for this mysterious reason which she doesn't understand and so she wants to uncover and find out what happened to her as well is what is going on with these dancing women so uh, yeah that sounds really uh, great and I haven't read her novel The Mercies uh, but I have kept meaning to because I've heard such good things about it and she seems to have a knack for writing about uh, groups of women from history that have been sort of dismissed because that's that's kind of what her previous novel is about as well but she she's also written a number of young adult novels and um, so yeah it's just a really interesting interesting author. So these are all the books that came through my letterbox while I, I was away. A really good haul and some really interesting uh, sounding titles. Uh, so let me know if you're interested in reading any of these as, as well or if you have read any of them. Uh, let me know if you think that they're worth reading or if you've received any books recently or bought any books or 
went to the library and got any books that you're really excited about reading, uh, let me know about that in the, the comments as well, because I love hearing about the books uh, that other people have been getting recently as, as well. So uh, thank you for watching, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.